vision of Providence has blazed like a beacon in the night in the minds of college hockey players. Now one team will take a championship. The North Dakota Fighting Sioux and the Boston College Eagles are here on talent and hard work and most of all, desire. Dakota beats opponents into submission. The Sioux start by playing the body, and they finish the job. Tonight, four seniors seek the second title of their college careers. Boston College captain Mike Motto leads by doing. BC rallied in the third period to win its semifinal when Jeff Farkas scored a goal for the ages, bringing BC to the brink of its first championship in half a century. Both teams are through waiting. inside a rocking Providence Civic Center for the national championship game. The Fighting Sioux have brought thousands here from Grand Forks, North Dakota, and the rest of the house is packed with Boston College Eagles faithful who have made the trek of just over an hour down here from Boston. Alongside Dan Moriarty, I'm Jack Edwards. Glad you could be with us for what annually is one of the highlights of the American sports calendar. We are going to see the best at their best. And the best player in the nation is Mike Motto, the captain of Boston College and a defenseman who yesterday won the Hobie Baker Award, which is emblematic of being the best hockey player in the country. This may be the last night you ever see number three on a BC hockey sweater. And you know, Jack, that is so true. The thing about him is, though, he's not just an emotional leader. The guy leads by example. Against St. Lawrence, had a pass led directly to the second goal that St. Lawrence had. Rallied the guys in the locker room, said, get him my back. Came out, and his actions spoke louder than his words. Tied the game. All BC from there for the win. However, Gorin on the flip side. Here, guy, he has 32 goals, second in the country. First in the country on game winning goals with seven and you know what he's a second team all-american his stage tonight he's saying you know hockey fans you know ncaa you made a mistake let me show you why there are more than 11,400 seats at the providence civic center right now very few of them are being used as the night goes on it'll be standing only we're back in a flash Boston College has a lot of players who know what it's like to get this far. In fact, 11 of them are appearing in their third consecutive Frozen Four. But they have had unhappy endings. Two years ago, Michigan, in the championship game, beat goalie Scott Clemenson and the Eagles for a 3-2 victory to end their season in the final game. Last year, it went overtime in the national semis in Anaheim, and Maine upset the Eagles and Clemenson 2-1 in sudden death. Brian Giant has determined that it won't end up that way this time. You know, Jack, I spoke to Brian this morning after the skate around, and he said, you know, I always get a hard time about my size and how big these guys in North Dakota are. But let me tell you, I want to play against Commodore and O'Connell every single shift. They're six foot whatever. I'm only 5'7". I come up to their waist. You know what? They cannot move laterally well enough to stay with me. He's given up nine inches to each of the big North Dakota defensemen. The Fighting Sioux won the national championship in 1997. They return four seniors from that title team. We drop the puck for the title game next. ESPN's presentation of the 2000 NCAA Hockey Championship is brought to you by American Airlines. Something special in the air. Inside the jam-packed Providence Civic Center, the adrenal glands already are working overtime for most of these 11,000-plus fans. A very partisan crowd in both directions. BC has the numbers on North Dakota, but the Fighting Sioux are going to make a lot of noise. 
in the BCN. Scott Clements, the last time he faced the Fighting Sioux, he beat him in the Western Quarters last year. And unfortunately, last two years in the Frozen Four, this kid lost both games. Not his fault, of course. However, they went in against him. He said this morning, with some unfinished business. Carl Gehring on the other side. He's got a concussion, was out for a month from a practice situation, came back in the semis, stood on his head, 30 saves. Coach Blaze says, this kid's the best we've had in North Dakota. That's a big statement when you've had John Casey and Eddie Belfort there before. We are underway. The fighting suit wearing the whole white hand skating left to right in the first period. This is left hard, can't control it. Lazuric throws it in on Clementson, saves the bouncer. There's Mike Mata, Obi Baker winner. To left hard. Over the blue line, dumps his check. Giuliano at the line. Commodore with the big guy pins him in. Coach picks it up. Marcus hits him for good measure. Comes all the way around the door. Gordon headbands the puck for over. Can't control in center zone. Allen bumps him at the blue line. Back to pick it up. It's Mata. Mata fires it across ice. Authoritative pass to left hard. He's got a big shot. Winds over the line and dumps it left wing corner. Both teams change leg. Gorin trying to walk it out of his own zone. Gives it away at the line. Gianta brings it in offside. Well, in the NCAA tournament, North Dakota received a bye as the number two seed. Beat Niagara, which had eliminated last year's finalist, New Hampshire. And in the national semis, defeated Maine, a number one seed. 2-0 and a most impressive display of checking defense and opportunistic defense to offense transition. The fighting suit really have a jump in their step when the opponent makes a mistake. Belfay over the line loses control. Back comes Lumbon who had a goal in the semis. Here's Panzer, a lot of speed, fires it cross ice. Long term comes all the way to start the route at the line. He keeps it in. Commodore can't pin it in. Scuderi gives it away. It's a three-on-two for the Fighting Sioux. One bomb down low. Panzer shot. Hits the side of the goal. Centering past Belfay. Controls Cobley. Backhands it all the way to the line and out into neutral zone. Missouri fires it around. North Dakota changes on the fly. Just a minute and a half in. We're in the national championship game in Providence, Rhode Island. Boston College in the maroon against the Fighting Sioux of North Dakota. Here's Alesh Golinar on the backhander. Easy stop, and he gets checked hard by Schneekloff into the corner. The Missouri backhands it three into center right. Gas chasing it down all the way in the other end. No ice called here. Otto. Now in center zone. This is Colanos. On the go, has Dolanar middle, shoots right on. Dolanar on the rebound, but he's checked off. Cass chases it on his backhand. Sends it around the boards. Missouri for North Dakota. Gets back. Bounces in traffic. Caulfield trying to find a handle on it. Here's Colanos. Makes the move on Missouri. Right in. Colanos can't hang on to it as he has to fight off a tough check. North Dakota playing the body well here. Here's Dory for the fighting Sioux. Over the line. Gets past Caulfield. Shot. Save Clemenson down in the butterfly as he squeezes shut the five hole. You know, that's great hitting by Ford and defense. First shift out. They put out the Farkas line. Giuliano weighs 212. Little 5'9 guy went out there. They're hitting Commodore and O'Connell a lot. Trying to throw them off the game. Get them, to get them out there to be undisciplined. Get some, get some bad hit penalty. Beta feeds over. He's in a low. Shot goes over the top. Commodore. Clemenson didn't really give it much. O'Connell back at the point. Fires it into the crowd. And it bounces to the right wing side. Here comes Stolen with Farkas, who had the incredible move in the semi. Tries another one. Nothing going here. Cross ice pass. Scuderi walks in. Fires on goal. Gorin is without a stick. It's broken. The shaft is right in front of the crease. Pucks underneath. And we're going to get a face off in the North Dakota zone. Just 317 into the action in the national championship game. And the crowd is stoked in Providence. North Dakota has great defense to offense transition, and the Fighting Sioux with a great early chance. Transition, nothing. I mean, <laughs> talk about getting something going right away, and fortunately for BC, Clemenson is to the test. Breakdown on the defenseman, right away he's looking upstairs, but Clemenson, being the tall goaltender that he is, took the corner right away, saw it coming. Almer never looked down, never gave away his shot. However, if you kept the feet moving, it would have been better to throw a goaltender off the goaltender. If your feet are moving all the time, thinks you may go lateral on him. He didn't do it. Clemenson could stand his ground. Upstairs, nothing. Excitement, though, for us and for the crowd. Electric atmosphere here in Providence. Blake 
Belfe wins the draw, but here comes Panzer. He's got great speed. It's a two-on-one with Scarborough. Panzer on the run. Full shot. Save Clemson, and he hangs on. I'll tell you what, Clemson has had two heartbreaking defeats in goal the last two years in the Frozen Four, but right now he's saving BC's bacon. And as I said in the open, he said, we have got some unfinished business. And it's the plural, we, this team has got to do it. Panzer, one of the best stick handlers in college hockey. Great play by the defense. Oh, look at Bobby Allen holding his own, making sure that he had to take the shot, leaving Clemens in the time to control. Only Panzer, not worry about a cross, a cross pass. Right there, everything's covered up. On bomb and Belfe on the draw. Belfe wins it to Mono. Mono stick handling around Panzer. Up the head to Belfe. It's a three on two. He has to dump it left wing corner and actually Garing can play it. Turns it up to center. Here's Panther with another burst of speed. Poke check by Pass. Gets it back to the line. Scarborough drops it off. Lundbaum on the way through. Shot save. Rebound scores! Mike Commodore! Something that North Dakota does quite off with their defenseman. Let him go up into the play. CAJ fans from Minnesota cheering on their league rivals who are on top. Lundbaum once again making a fantastic play. We saw it. We saw it in the semifinal game. The guy has speed coming from the boards. Always. Nothing Clemens could do about that. That right there is models clear. He's got to get it out of the way. Commodore behind him. You've got to see the man coming in behind him. And when the guy is six foot four, you've got to feel him behind you coming in for that for that loose puck. Commodore did the exact same thing in the uh, in the uh, the regionals. And he's back again to score one more time. Goes deep corner, Missouri. Pace him with a check. Dory gets it up to Defoe. Defoe on the go has Dory. Tosses it in front of him. Allen poke checks it back to Colanos at the red line. Caulfield gets hammered on a hit by Defoe. But here's Colanos with a shot. Hits the side of the goal. Garrick snapping out a leg. Defoe banged by Caulfield. Defoe gets it up ahead for Dory. Dory has arm rust with him in center zone. They weave. Big hit by Arm. Orbit, who comes through and cleans things out. Clemens corrals him for Bobby Allen. Orbit's got to continue doing more of that, Jack. He did the same thing against Wisconsin in the West Regional Finals. Threw off their stars. He's got to hit these guys up here. <laughs> Stay out of the box. He does lead BC in penalties. Bobby Allen working it deliberately through center zone. Tosses it for Jeff Parkus. Warren lines him up for a check. They bang in the corner. O'Connell can't clear it cleanly. Drive. Stick save and it goes up and over as Cass got a good piece of that one, but Gehring was true to the test. About five minutes in, 1-0 North Dakota. When North Dakota does score the first goal, it is 22 and 2. But in a national championship game, all those trends tend to mean a whole lot less when you add the fuel of emotion. They certainly do. And with the emotion, we have seen already three or four wide open shots in the first five minutes of this game. Very uncharacteristic of both these teams who play solid in their zone. You know, it's, it's national finals. Nerves do play front. A shot sticked out by Commodore. Off the sideboards, it's Alma. He's got Beta on the left. Drops it off to him. Down the middle and score, and he's got a shot for the far post and a save by Clemenson. Back at the point, O'Connell's high drive hits the top of the glass, goes all the way halfway up the board. Score and Beta turnaround shot. Clemenson makes another save. North Dakota has eight shots in the first five minutes, 23 seconds of this game. Jack, what I've seen already is three plays behind the defense where guys are coming across the blue line for North Dakota on the offense, and no one is there to pick them up. Whether it's a defenseman's job to get him coming across the slot, or a winger's got to back check a lot harder. This is the last game of the season. You can't save anything for tomorrow. you got to get back and get these guys. Yeah, Gorn's a big guy. He's kind of fast, but you've got to get back and catch him. 5-2 the scoring chances in favor of North Dakota. Commodore is fifth from Lundbaum and Scarborough at 348. An even strength goal to open the scoring in the national championship game. North Dakota has won its last four trips to the title game. Austin College has lost its last three. 
Dijon back of his own goal. Belfe on the hustle down the left wing corner trying to center and pass. He gets decked on the hard hit by Missouri. Scarper returns and sends it to center zone. Mata fires it off the boards all the way in around behind here. Missouri. Intercepted Hughes. The defenseman converted to a wing. Tosses it back of the goal. Missouri around the dasher. Lundbaum trying to screen Motto from it. It comes out over the blue line. Motto gets hammered on a long run by Scarborough. Bobby Allen over the line. Left side. Allen looking middle. Throws it on Gary. He has to punch it out of the way. Schneekloff up the board. And there's Belfe on another good move on the wing. Gianta trying to center ring pass. Hits a body. Motto keeps it in. Fakes the shot. Moves top. Wrist shot. Knocked away. Now it's a race for the puck. Motto gets there first. Panzer dives for it. And we're going to get a penalty called here at 6.32 of the first. Here we got Mike Motto coming in. Pinch off the blue line. You got to take your chances. Final game. <laughs> get control of the puck, though. Bring it back out. Look at this. Two guys take it, but what a great move to keep the puck going, paying the price, and get it across to one of his players, bring it back in. Aaron Schneekloth goes for cross-checking at 6.32, and we get our first look at Boston College's power play. BC, an exceptionally talented team. There are 10 finalists for the Hobie Baker Award, which Mako won. Three of the 10 nationwide are on this Boston College team. Roach chips it off the glass. It bounces all the way to center zone. Scuderi drives it around. 20.4% off the power play, but 0 for 4 in the national semifinal game. And Spiewak, who had a shorthanded goal in North Dakota's semi, sends it down the ice. You know, Jack, you talked about the three Hobies on one team. The thing is, what you got to do is check those Eagles that haven't played as a team, and they have done that thus far this year. They had a tough time early in the season, but then they all got together and realized we have one common goal. We can't win with just three guys. Interception by Roach. He has a break. BC back on defense, negating the numerical advantage. Hughes sends it off the backboards. Here comes Colados. Past Farkas. Left Park waiting for it at the blue line. It's behind him as well. There is no two-line offside pass in college hockey. The red line is used only for icing. Here's Alder going one on three. Motto picking it up for his defensive zone. North Dakota in the middle of a change here. Motto goes right side for Gianta. Another Hobie Baker finalist. Gianta into the center zone. They on the go. Hacked out of there. Over turns. Spins it to his own line. Lundbaum can't get it. Loses his glove. Has to go back and pick that up. Lifts it down the right side. Missouri catches it up to Homer. He tries to dump for Lundbaum, but North Dakota's going to change lines instead. Eight minutes into the first period. Fighting Sue on the board first. Commodore, a rebound goal just under the four-minute mark. Allen fires it in. Motto on the long hop off the corner. Centering pass. Noterman takes it away and fires it the length of the ice. Just 15 seconds to go on the power play for Boston College. The good, hard-working penalty kill of the Fighting Sioux rendering BC ineffective with the man up. And that's only half the Jack. The other half is you have a team full of great, skilled players. But here's the break. Right side, Gianta shot, save, rebound, comes all the way top of the slot. Norderman fires long, trying to hit Schneekloth on a breakaway. Scuderi over the line. Belfe gets checked. At the line, Scuderi catches the puck and tosses it ahead. It's a hand pass. The Fighting Sioux, loving their lead. It's one zip in the middle of the first. Back in Providence, Frozen Four NCAA Finals. You know, back in 97, the championship, another Boston team, unfortunately, went down to North Dakota, six to four win. BU led two to one after one, but ND scores five in the second. North Dakota wins their sixth. NCAA title. North Dakota with an all-time second best six NCAA hockey championships. By the way, not too many BC tears were shed for that BU loss. Those schools don't have a whole lot of love loss for one another, although there's great respect in that rivalry. In the corner, Kelly trying to work it toward the middle. This is the fourth line for BC as Jerry York tries to give his other guys a little bit of perspective here, maybe take a look at the game, settle down a little bit, play more of their brand of hockey. 
McLennan with a good hit in the left wing corner, and we're going to get a face off. College was the preseason consensus number one, but it did not have a bye in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Had to beat Michigan State 6-5 in OT in the first round, then knocked off top seed Wisconsin at the West Regional and beat St. Lawrence 4-2, including an empty netter. Really, it was a 3-2 game as Gianta scored with six tenths of a second to go. It should be noted, Jack, last year, BC was also the fourth seed, West Region, to get to the Frozen Four, and they beat this team right here in North Dakota to get here. This year, the number one seed, they beat Wisconsin to get here. So, Giuliano gets off a backhand just wide. Commodore and Giuliano, there's a huge mismatch in size, another 6-4 and a 5-7. But that 5-7 guy weighs 212 pounds. <laughs> exactly. Boston College has got some little trees Stumps are just fun as anything to watch. Giuliano and Gianta, numbers 10 and 12. Here's Omer in his own zone. Good stick work, but doesn't quite connect with Schneekwalk, the defenseman who's trying to rush up ice. North Dakota defenseman showing no hesitancy at all in joining the attack, and it is Commodore, the defenseman, who touches the puck right there, who has the game's only goal so far. Commodore fanning on the golf attempt. Omer bringing it out. He's got Beta on the left side. Gorin breaking down the slot. Here's Gorin. Can't quite find the handle. We're going to get a penalty coming up against Giuliano. Hauling down Gorin from behind. Probably a good penalty to take as you're talking about the number two scorer in the nation walking in on Clements. It's always a good penalty to take when you got a guy that good in front of you, that big, that great at scoring goals. However, once again, they got to get back in Patrick a little bit quicker. Coming across the slot here, you got Giuliano behind the play, just yanks him down. If he had better, what he should have done is had better positioning on him and been inside Lee Gorn and his goaltender, Scott Clemenson. Therefore, Lee would not have had a chance to get a shot off anyway and directed him to the corner. They've got to get back quicker. What two things they haven't been doing? One, picking up the guy coming from the blue line. Two, two longer passes, power play or five on five. He's just got to settle it down. Lundbaum to take the draw for North Dakota. Belfay out there for Boston College. He comes to the right of Clements and Belfay wins it. Allen drives it off the boards. A bit of a dead bounce. Gianta picks it up and just throws it down the river. Belfay on the forecheck. Sneak block. Up ahead for Lundbaum. Lundbaum has Panzer on the right side, broken up by Orkin. Schneeklaw can't handle the carom. Comes back to him, throws it through the pile, save Clemens all the way through. Big hit by Orpik. That's his trademark. He is the guy who knocks bodies flying for Boston College. Schneeklaw throws it into the backboard. Blood bomb, little cute feet in front. Scott Brew trying to jam, and Clemens is true to the task. 9 21 to go in the first. 1 0 North Dakota over BC. Baseball season and tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. The Indians go at it with the Devil Rays. You like home run derby? Well, here you go. Regular season version. Manny Ramirez and the rejuvenated Jose Canseco. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of Go Network. Go.com. Sunday night baseball. Always a treat. Sunday nights at 8 all season long on ESPN. And Jack, twice for that last whistle, you had two guys and one guy simultaneously in behind the field. Let those forwards get in there. Ballfield chopping it clear. Zurich at his own line for North Dakota. Ahead for Ulmer. Now here's Roach. Very tough defenseman. Pass doesn't connect. Scuderi takes it. Tries to spring left arc. Back comes Roach. Over the line. Gorin has Ulmer on the right. Back into the middle. Bam. Down the slot. Shot. Save. Rebound. Loose in front. Sticked out of there. Farkas has it. Jeff Farkas has it picked away by Beta, the freshman. Scuderi banking him to the corner, whacks it around, Roach at the point. As Missouri on the other point decides to come down the boards, it's in low, Beta stops the bouncing puck. Gorn takes a big hit from Scuderi. Beta and Omer and Gorn, the entire front line back of the goal. The spin around attempt, save Clemenson, he adds the paddle down. Now Lepart goes down, he was hooked by Beta. Beta's going for a slash. That comes at 11.35 of the first period, so with 27 seconds to go in the penalty to Giuliano, we'll have four on four, then a minute and a half Boston College power play. This is the definition of a power forward. Take the puck behind the net, 
take a guy on your back, come on around and get your shot off. Great pay by Clemenson to get the paddle down and make sure nothing went underneath him, but that is exactly what you're supposed to do. And then, a little frustration on North Dakota on that for some reason. It wasn't Gorin who did it, but came from behind, smacked him. You can't do that. Come on, boys. Great play by Gorin, just the same. And great hustle by BC, trying to get control of this game a little bit. Before that, the three guys coming in, you had a power play. Every single guy had the shot, but they all had their heads up, saw someone open with a better shot pass up. Beta almost capitalized and finished that nothing. Here's the four-on-four -four situation at which Boston College often excels. So much talent for the Eagles and a lot of open ice here. Hughes carefully over the line. Schneekloff drills him down. Here's Cass in front. The shot goes over the top. Gary, not a very confident look at it. What a great play. We've been watching Cass the past few days in practice and on, in the game. He has the best lateral movement of any defenseman on BC's team. The kid, a freshman, is going to be a star. He already is a star. He's great. Hughes trying to move toward the middle. He gets checked off the play, and Anzu takes the puck up ice. Anzu fires it in. It's five on four. Man advantage for Boston College right now. This is Dolan. Gianta dumps it off for Farkas, but he can't get to the puck. North Dakota sends it down the river. Great back checking by North Dakota. They went right to Farkas, took him right off the boards, did not let him sneak out. Here's Belfay, has a break. Farkas in the middle. Whacked away on a nice back check by O'Connell. Back to the point. Models drive. Save. Loose in front. Comes all the way back past the blue line and out. BC bodies are getting knocked flat every time they get in front of Gehring. You pay a price for going in there. North Dakota's defense doing a great job. Allen's drive. Save. Rebound. Gianta can't find the handle. And again, UND clears. 35 seconds to go on the man advantage for the Eagles. it off the glass of Connell there first drives it out Motto tracks it down 20 seconds to go on the power play Allen into the middle Lundbaum takes it away he's thinking shorthanded goal here Lundbaum on the goal pulls up Motto cleans him out and now takes the puck just 10 seconds to go for the Boston College power play six and a half left first period here's Farkas trying to move down the slot of Missouri Goes right the corner. Farkas circles back his pass it's over in the skates it's Norderman. Norderman sending it away. Beta on the break all the way in. Centering pass doesn't work. Scuderi around the boards. Ball field. We're back to even strength. Colados nearly has a break. Here's Dolinar in front for Colados. Caulfield kicks it toward the goal. Knocked out of there. Missouri takes the pressure off. BC throws it back inside the zone. Tremendous pace here in the middle of the first period. Both teams finding their rhythms. End-to-end -end action. They seem to have calmed down. You're right, Jack. And the passes now are a lot tighter, a lot crisper for both teams, especially Boston College. Here's Corey. He's got Armbrust on the right. Fires it all the way around. Clemenson stops it. Armbrust with a good leg of speed. Corey tracks it down in the corner. Scuderi backing him. They jam. Perfect. Dex. Armbrust. Armbrust going down, holding his head, but he gets back up. Is still in that rugby scrum. Caulfield finally pins it in, and we get the face off. And Orpik went back and hit Armbrust again. That's what he does so well. He can turn the tide of a game by himself, a freshman. 526 to go. First period. North Dakota has the first goal of the game. Boston College is making its physical presence known. to the Frozen Four. It's the national championship game between Boston College and North Dakota. Alongside Dan Moriarty, I'm Jack Edwards. North Dakota has the edge in the early going. The pans are coming in. Great play. Clemenson has been standing on his head already. We mentioned that before. However, that one was not his fault. He wanted someone back there to help him out. And this one here, Gorin just showing his size. Not to be denied, but once again, Clemenson was there. They talk about, you know, the poor kid. What's he going to do after losing two years in the Frozen Four? Well, I'll show you what he's going to do. He's going to play really well. And he's rise to the occasion already. You saw the anxiety with the BC fans. Two overtime losses in the last two Frozen Fours. Here's an automatic icing call against Boston College. You do not need to touch it up in college hockey. Once it crosses the goal line, if it's deemed to be icing, then icing is called, and the faceoff comes all the way back. 
BC, if you will, is the Boston Red Sox of college hockey. This is a, a team that has been very, very good many, many times. It never seems to have its year because it always runs into another team that is just a little better or it has a bad bounce of the puck or something goes wrong. But this team is convinced that that means nothing, that this is their year. Commodore throws it through a pile of deflects to the back post. Motto trying to clear it. O'Donnell is there. Over. Along with Warren. But Lephart has it for Boston College. Here's Farkas. He's got Giuliano on the left. Farkas cross ice intended for Cass, but again, North Dakota conscientiously back checking. Here's Gorin the sniper. Down the right side. Checked. Allen takes him out, and Clemens sticks it to the boards. And that time, Lephart had a great back check. Gorin had no one to cross the cross ice to. Covered by Lephart. Great play. Farkas getting the feed from Giuliano, but unable to get the puck down on the flat surface. Giuliano takes a pop from Gorin. The puck is underneath Farkas. And we're going to get a whistle. 4.29 to go, first period. North Dakota leading Boston College in the championship game. That is Doug Flutie, 1984 Heisman Award winner. The greatest football player Boston College ever has had. BC has a Hobie Baker Award winner in David Emma, who won it in 91. Now it has another one nine years later in Mike Motto. Number three on the current BC team. And you see it's fingernail biting time. Flutie's, he's a hockey player. Well, they talk about, you know, the 12th man in football. He's wearing number 22, which is not on the roster of BC. They gave him his own jersey. Just kind of feel like he's part of the team. And he is. He's a BC guy. No doubt of that. Five on five here. Late first period. North Dakota has the only goal of the game. Commodore scoring on a rebound with one bomb. And Scarborough the assists. Gianta gives it up to Lundbaum. Lundbaum throws it in. Scarborough on the forecheck as Allen distributes right side. Bobby Allen, cross ice pass intended for Belfay. It's going to go all the way across the line for icing. You know, in college hockey, without the red line, without the two line offside pass, you can see a pass go from a team's goal line all the way to the opposite blue line to try to spring a player. And that leads to wide open action. And with the speed of these two teams, you're going to see some of that. However, what they can't do, what they did earlier on, especially Boston College, was throw it across the ice to the far blue line. Keep it along the boards. It's a lot less dangerous over there. You can still spring your speed. This North Dakota team has a ton of talent. There is no doubt about that as we look at the captain, Peter Armbrust. But what blows that talent away is the way these guys work on every single shift. The price you pay for touching the puck if you are a North Dakota opponent is you get a bruise that you'll wake up with sore tomorrow. There is no doubt the fighting Sioux leave black and blue. Zurich all the way in on Clemenson, and he snuffs it for another faceoff. Well, two of the guys who hit the hardest are their blue liners, Tim O'Connell and Mike Commodore. That's Mike Commodore there, number eight. These guys, two, I mean, six foot four, 225, these guys. They're, they're, uh, he was, in fact, last year before the NHL draft, he was in one of the NHL rooms for a little interview. They came back out, and the, and the scout said, he scares me. Get down, get down. <laughs> the scout's name will go on set. Commodore from Saskatchewan. O'Connell is as homegrown as they come from North Dakota. He is a Grand Forks native. Milano's trying to get it loose. We're going to get a penalty coming up against North Dakota for a little extracurricular activity after the puck left the area. A high stick call against the Fighting Sioux with 3.32 to go in the first. Matt Shigos refereeing a very even game so far. Missouri goes to the box. And that's what BC wants to see. They want to use their speed to get that extracurricular activity out of the fighting suit, get them off their game, because right now their game is very, very solid. Hitting cleanly, skating, forward checking and back checking. You got to try and turn the tide here, BC does. Once again, we said earlier, they have all of these great specialty players. They've got to use them on the power play when they have the chance. But don't forget, in the game against Michigan State, the first round of the West Regions, six goals, all of them on special teams. Bobby Allen. Gianta in the middle. Shot goes wide. Farkas pulling the trigger on the one time. Allen. Gianta. Farkas. Point blank. Belfay. Save. Rebound. PC sticks in the air. No red light on. 
still loose. It could not even get closer. The referee sends it to the goal. Unbelievable. Never saw a light on that plate. And here comes the captain, of course, coming over. BC players confident that the video review is going to show this is it. the second effort. So Gorey he, had it. He sat on it, but as he sat, it slid. Oh, that's, that's a goal. That's a goal, unless we hear a whistle, which we didn't hear up here. Great passing. Belfe with the one-timer. Gorey goes back to sit on it. You see she goes in perfect position. You see the referee. She goes in perfect position. Right there. <laughs> and Fark is still in such perfect <laughs> position. He's on his butt. <laughs> Great passing. Belfe with the one-timer. Goring was there with a nice, nice, nice slide across the save, but nothing you can do about it. When Farkas is right on top of it, and there's no whistle. It's a goal. They have announced to the crowd of 11,000 plus that the goal is under review. And you see in the small box, the video replay judge. Oh, and Gehring now, had now there's it. There's no question the puck's over the line. The, the question becomes, was there a whistle right. before the puck was over the line? I don't think there was because Shigos was so adamant about his call. If anybody's going to blow a whistle, it's going to be the game referee. He was right there. He was right, he was supposed to be right behind the goal line, looking from the corner. Puck's going to be across. He was there, unfortunately, for, for Carl Gehring. It counts. The button wasn't long enough to knock it back out. It's a goal. We're tied up at one in the first period. Belfay will get one assist on Farkas' 32nd goal of the year at 16.47. We'll get you the second assist in a few moments. Needs to be repeated. Last game, the four goal scorers were Belfay, Gianta, Farkas, Motto. This is Belfay right there with the shot. Farkas with the goal. Who knows who the assist is? The same guys keep on coming through. They are the leaders of this team. Let's go, boys. Follow them along. They keep on saying with their actions. Well, North Dakota definitely has had more of a physical presence in this game than Boston College, but three penalties to one for BC, and now a power play goal for the Eagles. And here's a break right side, Lepar. He has Farkas middle. Lepar into the middle, right across the slot. Body slam into the boards. Dakota comes back the other way. It's over. He's got Bain, a working slot. Over, looking middle. This stick handles, fires it off the side of the goal. Beta pins it into the back of the goal. We're going to get another whistle. This one for a hook, and I believe the North Dakota is going to go on the power play here at 17-13 of the first. Well, we'll all catch our breath at intermission with the Taco Bell <laughs> intermission report. A little OT in New Jersey. The Devils making their fans crazy at the end of the year. Are they going to hang on and do something or not? You can find out after another 247 of action. And here is the penalty as Giuliano is going to go. Omer on the right side. Giuliano, once again, we saw it about five minutes ago, back checking on Gorin and pulling him down. This time he goes wrong. Wrong guy, hooking penalty, pulls him down again. You got to take two extra strides, get in front of him, and just cut him off, bring him to the boards. The referee's going to call everything. It's a national championship. Don't let your aggression get better if you. Scarf moves down into the corner. Orpik on the check back. The goal, Scuderi okay, poking go. it away from Scarproot. Scarproot scrambles onto it, trying to get away from Scuderi. Good work with Panzer. Panzer on the back. Scarproot, Panzer. Trying to set up a slot man. Lundbaum parked at the crease. Halfway up the board, sneak lock. Can't keep it from popping into the air. Big hit. North Dakota fans want to charge, not going to get it. Scarproot, broken up at the line. Gianza sends it back to neutral ice. 15 to go in the penalty kill for Boston College. Right through the one bomb. Can't get the shot off. Motto on the check. Motto trying to pick it out of the pile. Scarf Rude has it. Brings it halfway back up the course. Now all the way to the point. Schneekloff distributes. Commodore fires it. Save Clemenson. Motto slows things down. Eases the blood pressure of BC fans and tosses it down the river. There's going to be some chalkboard talking to here here from Coach Jordan. I can tell because every single time down when they get a little bit of a break, they break someone fighting Sudu through the center of the ice at the blue line. Someone's going to get back and pick them up. Defense has got to be aware of them. That time, last time, Mike Motto was there. Motto's sweep check deprives UND of the centering pass attempt. 
35 seconds to go in the penalty kill for Boston College. Roach winds it up for UND. Here come the fighting Sioux over the line. Roach has made it with him, drops it off for Gorin. He gets checked, throws it halfway down the boards. Roach down low, Scarp loop behind over, comes out to Missouri. Right in front, Beta touches it off. Boston College breaks back. It's Farkas who has fabulous moves. The Toronto property goes through the legs and run. He hit the post. What an amazing move by Farkas. The crowd is oohs and ahs as the penalty expires. Boston College ices it. Let's listen. Gianza got the other assist on Farkas's goal. It was nearly his first of two. Here comes Farkas. I mean, you can't, you, you can't teach this. This is something you're born with. This kid is just a magician. I mean, let's face it, Roach, Travis Roach is a great defenseman, and luckily for Carl Gehring, that post happened to be just close enough for him. Great positioning by Carl, which gave obviously some of uh, Jeff's shooting alley a little bit of a little bit away. However, I mean, just not, you can't. Once again, I said you just can't teach that. <laughs> if you're born with it, boy, are you lucky. Well, the move he made in the national semifinal game against St. Lawrence is going to go down in Frozen Four history as one of the all-time greats. I mean, when you when you think about NCAA basketball, you know, you, you, you think about Michael Jordan's shot from the baseline, maybe a, a Danny Ainge move that went coast-to-coast uh, coast against UCLA in this very building a generation ago for BYU. Well, that one, that one is going down in all-time hockey history. It's one of the great moves. And Farkas nearly had his second in two games. I was going to say, if that goal had, if that shot had gone in and it scored, he would have been back-to-back the two best moves ever. Here comes Caulfield up the right side. The final 30 seconds of the first period. Bodies flying all over the place behind the play. No harm, no foul. The refs let it go which is the good call. Orpik fires it right side O'Connell, picks it up along the boards. Caulfield looking for a hit. Dolinar in center zone, sends it back for Orpik. He'll just waste the clock. Here's the applause from the fans as the first period ends. You can stand up, take a breath, and cheer too at home. We're at the national championship. It's 1-1 after 1. ESPN's presentation of the 2000 NCAA Hockey Championship is brought to you by AXA Advisors. AXA Advisors, building futures. If you're channel surfing and you just stumbled across the Frozen Four on ESPN, boy, did you just hit gold. We're at the end of the first period of the National Championship game. Boston College and North Dakota tied 1-1 in what has been a dandy and what promises to get even more intense. Alongside Dan Moriarty, I'm Jack Edwards. Glad you could be with us. Don't go anywhere for at least the next two hours because this game's really going to heat up. After the first period, the NCAA gave us permission to talk to Jerry York in the tunnel. York says his guys have a little bit of work to do even though it is tied 1-1. We were weak at uh, that period was not picking up the trailer. Their defensemen joined the play. Our, our wingers coming back off a four check really have to pick up that late trailer. They're very dangerous hitting the late man coming in the zone. And we saw that quite a bit from up here, but let me show you down below. I mean, the beginning of this game was hit, 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 hit. 20 minutes under their belt. We have a 1 1 ball game. We have 13 shots apiece. Everything a national championship could expect. These guys are going at it from the beginning to the end. Guess what? With 20 minutes down, they should now be well. The butterflies are gone. There's 40 minutes left, left of hockey, and they're all even. Marcus, Gianta, and Belfe. Look at that. Each over 50 points on the season. And it is the first time in 10 years that the BC Eagles have had three such prolific scorers. Toby Baker Award winner Mike Motto at the blue line as we get set to start the second period. And that's important you bring up those three guys, obviously, from all the points. Belfay wasn't even one of the nominees for the Hobie. What happened to him? Oh, he only won the MVP in the Western region, won the MVP of Hockey East last year. And these guys are loaded. That's a guy who got two in these championships as far. Shorthanded goals. One here, one in the West regions. Shots 13 apiece in the first period. Boston College wearing the visitors maroon, attacking left to right. 
Fighting Sioux of North Dakota wearing the home white with the green and black trim. Here's Noterman breaking out of his own end with Marcus on his tail. Broken up at the red line. And now wrestling match for it. And we're going to get a fade. And we're going to get a holding penalty against North Dakota just 25 seconds into the second period. Now they began the first period the same way they began the second. Put Giuliano out there with Farkas. The kid weighs 212 pounds. Let him hit some people. First period, Giuliano had a step slow for a guy who's as quick as he is. Had two hooking penalties. This time, he draws a penalty because of his power and his speed, his aggressiveness. Noterman going at 25 seconds of the first period. Now there you see the first period stats about as even as it gets, except in hits where Boston College surprisingly had the lead over North Dakota. It's not to say North Dakota wasn't making a lot of contact, though. The Fighting Sioux really playing very, very physically. And in fact, it was in the second period, their willingness to hit against Maine in the semifinal to turn that game. It was like the middle rounds of a heavyweight championship match and the body blows finally tore down the opponent. We anticipate that North Dakota will come out with a similar effort right here. The power play, Gianta loses it. Back comes Spiwak. He had a shorthander in the semis. Spiwak trying the wraparound, sends it in front. Bobby Allen there. That kid's cool. Coming off the boards every single time. Fargus. What a talent. Fires it around. Gianta, Belfe, halfway down the wall. Spiwak pins him in. Tries to get it down the boards, but North Dakota clears to center. And I mentioned coming off the boards because every single time you'll see the fast forwards, the fast wingers of this fighting suit, they will get to the blue line, stay right along the boards, and then cut into the top of the circle. Boston College one for three on the power play tonight, and just 53 seconds to go on its fourth man advantage. As again, North Dakota sends it down the river and gets fresh legs on the ice. Are on the four check, forcing BC to go back to Motto, back of his own goal. To Motto. Motto faces Panzer. Panzer upends him. Here's a shorthanded chance. Panzer's very quick, centering a shot actually right on. I thought he was going for the pass. Well, he would have jacked with a great play by the BC defense to get back and pick up that other guy coming across. The fans really didn't have much of an angle. Commodore hits Lephart, knocks him off the puck, then falls on it. We'll get the face off to the right of Gehring. Well, we talked about Jeff Farkas on Thursday night. He scored one of the all-time all-timers in Frozen Four history, and here it is. If you didn't see it Thursday night, sit down right now and just, just enjoy, because this guy, I said it before, we say it every time, he's magic. All of a sudden, the nice thing is St. Lawrence, unfortunately for them, they opened up the, the, the Red Sea, and he just walked right in. Now tonight, once more, the same kind of thing. <laughs> that That's good stuff. That is just good stuff. You know, he showed not only his agility, but also his strength there. Now, here's Hughes teeing it up. Change of pace shot. Gary sticks in the corner. Caulfield, Lephart in the weave as they cycle down low. Lephart sends it around. Milano, back to the point. Scuderi throws it through a pile. Deflects off a stick off the glass. Lephart, again, around back of the goal. Milano trying to get away from the check. Schneekloff knocks him down. North Dakota very eager and physical on the penalty kill. Here comes Noterman. Gets over the red line and dumps. Scuderi. Allen. Check it. It's Kelly. No! Caulfield gets hit. Goes to Gorn at the North Dakota line. We're five on five. Scuderi dumps it in. And we're getting... Another whistle, and I think it's another one going against North Dakota. Having been in Providence for the Frozen Four about 15 years ago and having come back now, I can tell you this is now the model for every middle-sized city in America to rebuild and make a beautiful city out of itself. This is a great venue for the Frozen Four. Not so happy a place right now for Tim O'Connell in the box for slashing at 3.04 of the second period. So North Dakota starting to pile up the penalties. This is the fifth minor assessed against the Fighting Sioux. BC one for four with the man advantage to take the drop against Belfe. Belfe wins it back to Mono. He's got Allen at the right point, sends it down the boards to Belfe. Back to Mono, picks it up to the stick. Allen, the man in front is Gianta. Belfe can't get all the wood on it. Roach off the dasher. Mono pins it in. Here's Belfe, top of the circle, top of the slot. Uh, 
intercepted Roach. The freshman, he is mighty calm. You can see them setting up down below, and Belfay coming to the top of the circle. When they get back down there, if they get back down there, watch that same play again to open up for them as they expand the box of the Fighting Sioux and have the wing on the far side come up high for the one-timer. Belfay over the line. He's got Farkas middle, throws it around. Gianta waiting for it halfway up the wall. Back down, past Farkas. All the way through to Belfay. Farkas plays it through his forehand. Belfay turning it back. This is Mata. Wrist shot. Kicked out of the middle. That's uh, Missouri getting his leg out in front of him, just kicking it aside. That's a great play, but it also can be a dangerous play because if you don't have that puck hitting you square in the shin, that could be a bad bounce for the goalie who's right behind you. He was only four feet in front of him. Gianta hits Belfe in stride. Schneekloff breaks it up. Bouncer in center zone. Caulfield tracks it down. 45 seconds to go in the man advantage. And we're going to get a penalty called behind the play. The Boston College door is open, so we'll go four on four for 44 seconds. Then it'll be a buck 16 power play for North Dakota. The discussion over there looks like it's a too many men in the ice when they were changing on the fly. That's exactly what it is. is something that players have to keep yourself in the game, keep concentrated. The coaches always tell them who's going to be going out next, what power play unit is next. They practice this every single day. It's a matter of not being too excited, saying, oh, i got to get over there right now. Your chance is going to come. Make sure you know who's going out for who when the guy gets within three feet of the bench over the boards. All right, Hughes is going to serve the penalty. It is a bench line. Marty Hughes, the junior from Hicksville, New York. So we go four on four. Kalanos and Caulfield with Scuderi and Orpik for Boston College. Spiewak, Noterman. This is Schneekloff and Pablo also out there for North Dakota. Schneekloff, a nice first to get away from, from Polanos. But it's stick check and then he takes the puck away. Cross ice pass in the BC zone, dangerous. Corker turning it to Scuderi. Another one here is across the call field. They've got to stop doing that. Orpik gives it away. Spiewak very quick. Orpik hits it. Now Polanos tries to finish him off. Finally, Scuderi takes the puck away, but he in turn loses it. In the pile, you hear the linesman yelling, move it, move it, move it. It's pinned underneath. Noterman on the back, gives it to Spiewak, tries the backhander, save Clements, and Noterman almost stuffs it in the short side. We're five on four, North Dakota power play here as the fighting suit get the man out of the box for the man advantage. Two Boston College guys got kind of mesmerized behind the net. Spiewak comes along and just steals it. Four, no fresh, one's four fresh bodies out there for BC to try to kill this penalty off. Of his own goal. Giuliano hacks it to center zone. Here's Roach. Homer in traffic steps through a check, but Allen whacks it back to center. Homer dumps it in right wing corner. Clemens corrals it. 35 seconds to go in the North Dakota power play. Gore kicks it up the board, steps past Lotto's check. Dolinar into the backboards, overskates it. Warren still digging for it. Dolinar flicks it to the corner. Missouri there for North Dakota. Dolinar pops in, but not before he can get it to Gore. Gore down on the Allen check. Noterman gloves it ahead. He's got time to tee it up. His drive whistles way wide. Roach just chips it in the middle. Glove save. Clements in shot. Hit the post. Came out the back side. Two great chances for Gore, but BC dodges a bullet thanks to the pipes. That was a great extension by Clemenson right there all the way, and that great play looking for Hughes just now in the long clear, which is why they put him in the penalty box in the first place to serve that bench minor, to get him out to break him late. BC ices the puck to take the pressure off. North Dakota coming within about a half an inch of going up 2-1, six and a half minutes into the second period of the national championship game. This is what you can do when you are the size of Lee Gorin. Great save, and then no one can move you out of the net. The defense gets over there too late. You have a long reach. That's what's so important with Lee. I, 
you see him call for the puck, and then he goes to the net. I mean, great play. Obviously, Clemenson just extended all the way. But the number two, Allen, gets his stick right on Gorin's shaft, and it helped him knock it just a little bit. Hit right there. You see him hit it stick, and as he did it, it goes up over the net. Great play by Allen to get back there. Once again, the lead Gorin with his size and his extension almost put up 2-1. to one. Delphi wins the draw for Boston College. Cass on it, has to send it back with his own goal to Scuderi, making the safe play. Back to Cass. Cass looks up ice. Belfay sidesteps the check. Scuderi picks it up. Now Belfay dumps it left wing corner. O'Donnell picking it up, trying to get away from Giantas. Check. This is Commodore, the goal scorer for North Dakota. He gives it away. Hughes centering pass. Loose in front. Gianta misses. Turn around. Goal! Hughes stops it! Two on BC! That puck went in off Carl Gary. decided, you know what, he's such a great offensive defenseman, let's put him on forward, let him use his speed and his puck control abilities, get him more ice, get my five defensemen that are the players that I'm using most more ice, put him on the forward line, and since the change, BC has gone 16-4 and four with Marty Hughes on that wing with Belfay and Gianta. The kid, every single time out of the zone, you'll see him through the blue lines, always hanging on. Len Siglarski coached Boston College for 20 years after Snooks Kelly had his brilliant career. Siglarski played for Snooks on the 1949 team that last won a national championship for BC, and Siglarski is here trying to cheer on the Eagles tonight. Well, if there is one thing we have learned about North Dakota in this frozen form, it is that the Fighting Sioux will not be outworked. And we're going to see an example of the work ethic here because watch these guys turn it up a notch. So here are, comes the next gear. There's a reason fighting is in your nickname. Zurich at his own line. It bounces off of left heart. Zurich controls it. Backhands it three to center. Here comes Beta charging against Allen. Beta turns the corner. He's got over middle. And it just goes through to the other side. That one team was great back checking on that play. The hook up on, on Ryan Beta. Number 27, Mike Lepard. Took his stick away. The puck just sailed through the front of the front. Or facing a four check from four. And chips it off the glass of butterflies out the center. The fighting suit jump on it right again. It's all Beta trying a centering pass. It's behind over, and here comes Farkas. Farkas trying to twist Schneeklaw. Schneeklaw stands him up, down goes Farkas. There's Julian. Nobody to pass it to yet. He waits, tries the wrap around. Zurich is on him. North Dakota takes the pressure off. Otto at his own line. As BC tries to press, tries to get the insurance goal here. Caulfield chipping it down into the corner. Missouri around the boards. Schneeklaw absorbs the bang from Dolinar, gets it to center, but Motto's on it again. North Dakota just trying to get it over the red line. Get it offside. And the drop comes back to center ice. Jerry York, a student of the game, but he's got plenty of emotion too. His Eagles lead 2-1 in the title game at the Frozen Four. If Doug Flutie has a smirk on his face, maybe it's because the little guy for BC, Brian Gianta, has two assists, helping BC to a 2-1 lead. You've probably gotten a size thing too, huh? Yeah, yeah, all the time. All the time. Yep. It's amazing. They keep telling you, you can't do this, you can't do that. You lead the nation in scoring, and then all of a sudden you have a bad day. Yeah, see, I told you, it's too short. Yeah, just use it as motivation. You know, it's before I leave. I gotta find out who's tall. Let's just uh, that's gotta stand off. I here. think he is. I got him. I got somebody. <laughs> He's got somebody. He is taller than somebody. I'll tell you what, Gianta is standing huge right now with two assists and BC on top. Spiewak wins the drop back for Loach. Loach dumps it down the left wing side. Nodeman on the go. Golf 
shot won't clear the zone for BC. Hale chasing it down. It comes to Loach right at the center spot. He ladles it into the right wing corner. Cass picks it up on the carom, fires it around. Caulfield trying to muscle it past O'Donnell. Now Motto chips it up and over. Here's Dolinar at the red line. Dolinar, it's a four on two. Motto pulls it up back to Dolinar to right on and a save Gary. Colanos with a big exchange off the play against Noterman. No harm, no foul there, but a lot of contact. It'd be a nice play by Dolanar, first of all, and the move. The best part, though, is you got to drive to that net. Four on two, don't sit back. Your defenseman's going to take you, and that guy went to Dolanar. However, there's two guys right behind him that Mato could have given it to the Pax one, but just a great pass all the way. Carl Gehring, that's how you play inside the post. Nice play. Lesh Dolinar improving as he goes with Boston College. He's always moving faster than he looks. And it's funny how so many of these guys on both teams have improved from sophomore year, freshman year to sophomore year to junior year. They get maybe a little homesick the first year. They got to get adjusted to the kind of hockey college that they're playing. And then they come around with great seasons. Commodore, back of his goal. Pressure from Gianta. Motto on the check. And that frees Cass to the puck. Back in his own end. Belfay flicks it up over the BC bench and into the crowd. And will drop it in center zone. Well, well, well. The National Hockey League season's coming down to its very final day. You know, no kidding. Dan, you and I are going to be covering the playoffs for ABC and ESPN and ESPN2. And we have no idea where we're going. The Not playoffs, playoff series won't be decided until tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern time, live on ABC Sports Regional coverage. Well, the Western Conference standings, we know St. Louis is going to end up in first, but just about every other position is up for grabs there. Never mind how we feel. How do the players feel? They have no idea where they're going or who they're playing against. John Saunders got a long day in the studio. <laughs> He's got a long day in the studio tomorrow. Better bring the slide rule. I think John likes sitting in the studio, though. He can hang right there. 10.50 to go, second period. BC with a 2-1 lead on North Dakota. This is the national championship game. How many times we have seen this game go deep into the third period or into overtime? Dollar for dollar, if there is a better buy in sports than college hockey, I don't know what it is because you get the intensity, the emotion, and a very high level of skill all wrapped into one. And both these teams obviously deserve to be here. Great teams. But you got to wonder, as the game goes deeper into the second, into the third period, with a tight score, how is it going to affect the BC team being here for a third year? Are they more experienced and they say we deserve it and they stay loose or are they tight? They say the heart breaks have helped them. We're going to find out. Here's Ulmer. He's got Gordon Middle. Shot right on. Save Clemenson. Clemenson and Gold for both of those frozen four overtime losses. Two years ago in the national championship game in Boston. Last year in the national semis. Shot right on over. Save up high Clemenson and he stones him that time. That hit him in the side of the mask, and he hung right with it, shook it off, and jumped on it. You mentioned this, the kid, uh, Clemenson, losing the last two years in overtime. As the players like to say, we all lost in overtime. It wasn't Scott Clemenson, and that's why the kid is so tight between the pipes. Ulmer getting off a rocket. And a great... A great job by Scott Clemenson to keep his mind, keep his bearings together, and get on that puck before one of the fighting Sioux come through and sweep past him. Clemenson again regaining his bearings here as he took a pop up high. It's a pretty nifty goals against average, sub two in NCAA tournament games. Right. I mean, the kid, the kid, obviously, he also has a BC record for 10 shutouts. He had five of them this year. Talk about a kid who's playing great hockey. By the way, the guy at the other end, Gehring, has 12 career shutouts. <laughs> we are seeing two of the very, very best. Motto chips it up to left one. Left one ahead for Marcus. Marcus sends Giuliano away. Roach reaching out for Giuliano, chugging to the backboard. Holds his jack and loses the puck. Scarp root up for Notre Dame. dumps it down the side. Hale after it. And a great play by Bobby Allen on that one to take the man and let the puck go off the boards behind him and his other defensive partner come back and get it, which is Mike Motto. Hang on to Hale. Don't let him get past. Just past the midway point of regulation time. Boston College with a 2-1 lead on North Dakota. In 
centers on Farkas. Loses it in his skates. It's notable at the BC line. North Dakota's going to dump and change lines. Long pass looking for the sneak away. Didn't work. Jeremy Wilson was there. It was worth the risk. Now that's a time when that long pass is okay. You're coming out on your own blue line. It's through center ice. Even though it's across center, not up the boards, it's okay there because you're all coming out, all five guys, and they're backing up. He's almost at his blue line, a few feet short, and you see the guy sneak off the boards, off the quick change, get him behind. Here we go. Oh, baby, is it there? Is it there? Oh! <laughs> Try it again, guaranteed. Just got to make sure you do it far enough out of your zone that you don't get caught handcuffed. But here's a good chance for North Dakota after the icing with the faceoff in the BC zone. The Eagles negated. Dolinar over the line, loses it on the check. Right in front, it's Kalanos gets dumped. Commodore is going to go. Kalanos getting off a shot despite that. Now we get a tussle right next to the post. And Garing is down. The North Dakota goalie down awkwardly. A North Dakota player came in to clear out the next player from BC coming through after Kalanos was taken out by Commodore. Carl Gehring is down and not moving too well right now. They may be taking one player from each team. We, now, we have no idea what this injury is. We're not going to speculate as to what it might be, but a, a bit of background on Gehring. He had a concussion when he was hit in the head with a shot by a teammate during practice and missed nearly a month of action. He has played just one game since March 12th because of the concussion. He's up on his fanny now. He's sitting up. The first part of the play, you get, you got Colonos coming in. A nice move, and Commodore just takes him out because Colonos is a guy with a magical stick. He takes him down. After that, however, coming in the goal, looking for the, for the, uh, for the rebound, is, is, is Alesh Dolinar, and Dolinar comes in and just hits the goalie as he's down, Carl Gehring down with it. Oh, he got a stick right. Now, Connell came with him and pulled him along. But right there, he was going for the puck. O'Connell came in, took him with him, and the stick got him right inside of the head. He's back up. He's back up moving around. Fortunately for Carl Gehring, he's still in there. Backup goaltender Andy Kohler. Andy Kohler, exactly chopped little. <laughs> Every, uh, for the entire time that Rusty that Carl was down with the concussion, he got him here. It was a great get, GPA. We're going to get matching minors, by the way, as Dolanar goes for Boston College for slashing, and Commodore goes for North Dakota for holding. So we will play four on four here for the next two minutes. Once again, we see players from both teams, those skilled players out there four and four. Where things are open up a lot more ice. Belfay trying to win the draw for Boston College against Lundbaum. Gianta hops on it, but Mazurik is there first. Lundbaum long the board. Mazurik. As Panzer up ahead gives it to Panzer. Crisscrossing in center zone with Lundbaum. Big hit in center by Belfay. Now Belfay picks it up at his own line. He's got Gianta on the right. Belfay, curl and drag move, nothing doing. Schneekloth reads it all the way. Lundbaum on the far side, picks it up against the boards. It's a three on three, tons of ice out there. Lundbaum over the line, here's Panzer. Panzer has a trailer, Schneekloth. Schneekloth goes corner in circles. He's got Lundbaum in the middle. Can't quite get it to him. Bottle sticks it out of there, and here comes Farkas with the awesome moves. Up ahead, Gianta just misses. Big hit from Schneekloth as they tumble to the corner, and Gehring puts his glove down on the puck. We catch our breath. 8.31 to go in the second. It's 2-1 BC. Providence Civic Center. This is the Frozen Four alongside Dan Moriarty. I'm Jack Edwards. Boston College and North Dakota in the national championship game. It is 2-1 BC and the tempers are really starting to flare. And when the tempers flare, this is when your tough guys, your big guys, have got to keep their tempers under control. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of John out there. Schneekloth hitting Gianta, throwing him back. I'm sure John may have said something to him. The play before when Alesh Dolinar hit Carl Gehring in the head. O'Connell was right on his backside. Who knows what was said? I'm sure Alesh Dolinar didn't come with a stick high on purpose. But, you know, and they're all talking back and forth. The guys who keep their heads about him and keep cool are the ones that are going to come on top. Here comes a determined North Dakota team. Down 2-1. Scarperoo dumps it in. It gets past Clemenson all the way to the far side. 
Spiewak trying to center it. Lephart takes it away. Farkas has Spiewak on his back. Puck gets to the blue line, but Spiewak keeps it in. 52 seconds to go with a four on four. Lephart gets around Scarpero. Now he goes to work on Roach. Lephart all the way corner. Roach pokes it away. Lephart gets it back. Into the corner. Here comes Mono, the captain. The Hogan Baker Award winner missed stick handles. The puck Roach takes it away, faces a big hit. Lephart getting a piece of him. Mono screening with his body, and the puck comes back to center to BC. 22 seconds to go with a four on four. Jerry around the dash. Commodore checking O'Connor, sending it out. Made it, dumping it down the wing. Over, skating onto it, but Clements in there first to send it around for Mono. Caulfield. This is Colano trying the one-on-one -on -one move. Schneekloff doesn't buy it. Missouri sends it off the board. Over. Hit by Dolan. Here comes Beta. Beta working Cass. Cass leaves his feet. Beta still has it. Cass knocks him down. Over looking for a centering pass. Missouri working out by the left point with five on five again. Mato gets it out of the corner. Now for Polanos. Polanos headmans the puck. Alesh Dolanar has Caulfield middle. Dolanar making the move. Slammed into the back. Sneak clock taking him in hard. Gorin, the sniper, coming back up the other way. Getting worked over by Polanos all the way. Gorin drops it off. Almost in the slot. Homer can't get the shot off because Dolanar's working him over with the stick. Great backside by Dolanar all the way. Dolanar's the man who stopped that play. To Dolan Arvin. Ulmer takes it back. Here's a two on one for BC. Kalanos make it three on one. He's got Allen in the middle. Center pass. Sweet checked away. Great play by O'Connell getting back on his belly using the shaft to the stick. Allen goes cross ice for Hughes. We've got six minutes to go in this period. The pace is incredible. Move it, move. Orbit at the red line. Up the right side. Hughes pulls up and takes the roach hit. Sends it up for Lundbaum. He's got Scarborough with him. Lundbaum shot safe. Clements and long rebound. Scuderi on it for Boston College. Backhands off the glass to center. Andrew returns it to Roach. Roach right up for Lundbaum. In the weave in neutral ice. Lundbaum over the line. Scuderi poke checks it away. Here comes Belfay. Belfay has Hughes. Middle BC's He's changing on the fly. So they go two on three here. Tries the hot move. Commodore's going to go for a penalty. Aggressive, aggressive skating. Watch him go up in the air now. The Commodore just take him down with the stick between the legs, tripping. You can't two hands on the stick when the guy makes that move. You're gonna go off every single time. Let one hand go on the stick. But in fairness to Commodore, this is exactly the quickness mismatch that Belfay and BC said they would try to exploit. You get a big guy like that, you can move quickly laterally, make him make a mistake. Completely, but you can't you can't stay as aggressive on the stick. Let one hand go. Belfay but still get up and around you and fall on the ground, but you will get called for the penalty. And you know what? That goes back to what's been happening the past five minutes with the hitting going on. A guy like Commodore and O'Connell, Orpit, Sneakhoff, different bigger guys are taking it into themselves, saying, oh, I'm going to hit this guy and knock him out. Boston College has won one national championship in hockey. It came more than half a century ago in 1949, just the second year of NCAA hockey championships. Jerry York has won one. That was with Bowling Green in 1984. But now he comes back to his alma mater and tries to lead the Eagles to the title here. They look for insurance on the power play. Belfay to take the drop. Allen moves it to Motto. His drive tipped in front. Loops. Gary gets it back to the goal. Motto fakes the shot. Allen's drive deflects to the back of the chips at it. Farkas getting it loose. Shot hits a body, and here's Roach. Gets it to the line and out to center. Roach is so calm on the penalty kill. Every time he has a chance to settle the puck down, he'll take it, wait, and then do something good with it. And that says a lot for a freshman in the national finals playing the penalty kill against one of the best power play units in the country. Lephart has a big drive. He stops left side. No openings there as Roach checks it. Skinner, wrist shot, same rebound, loose, 
Quick whistle. We'll get a faceoff coming to the left of Gehring. A really good whistle for, for uh, North Dakota on that play because BC was going behind the net with two guys going to be going out front and Carl Gehring down in his stomach. Caulfield hustle all the way through that. Looked like it was going to be a one-timer on this one here. Nice quick snapshot. Oh, quick, quick whistle right there. Caulfield got in, had the play. Nice play by, by Caulfield, nice play by BC, because what they were doing all the time from the right point is going across the, the top to the left-hand circle, and that kind of handcuffed the players from North Dakota, thinking the same thing was coming. Nice BC shot. controls the draw on the power play. Polanos going cross ice. Skidari trying to feed it down low, less than a minute to go on the power play for Boston College. Skidari to Hughes, his one-timer, he fans on it. Sets it up again. Skidari working on Spiewak. Hughes sends it down low. Kalanos, the man in front is Caulfield. The perimeter, Hughes is one-timer, blocked. Gets it again across the middle. Sticked out of there, Missouri alertly seeing the diagonal pass and getting rid of it. Here's Norderman with a shorthand attempt. His drive kicked out, Clemens. Norderman with the shorthanded challenge. 25 seconds to go on the Boston College power. Good here. Great eyes in the last play by Hughes to go across the top. Great anticipation by Missouri. Here's the Hobie Baker Award winner, Motto, sending it down the boards. Getting it back, wrist shot. We're going to get a call right in front of the goal for a Boston College player skating through the crease. It's an automatic call. Faceoff comes outside the blue line. Unlike professional hockey, once you go through the judgment call and then the referee, they may let it go once in a while, but I, usually if they get far enough in that crease, the whistle happens right away. You saw the referee on that right in the back behind the net where he always is, as he was for Far Farkas's goal in the first period. Easy call for the ref. The key is Dean Blaze, the coach of North Dakota, looks on is that the player is getting in the goalie's line of sight. He's interfering with the goalie's ability to do his job. North Dakota blocking four shots to one for Boston College. McLennan sending it around for Dolanar. One bomb is there first. Dolanar bangs him. Panzer scoops it out. Four to five on five now. Backhander saved by Clemenson, and he hangs on. We're at even strength. Three and a half minutes to go, second period. Boston College leading North Dakota 2-1 in the national championship game. up 2-1 late second period as we go five on five North Dakota has the edge in shots 21-17 but Boston College probably has had more good scoring opportunities and obviously has cashed in on more face off in the BC zone Roach walking in top of the circle wrist shot St. Clemenson McLennan hacks it down the ice the other thing that BC has had more of is the power play. He's going to keep an eye on that because North Dakota, they get frustrated. They're going to take more penalty. Almer loses to Dolinar. Dolinar with McLennan. McLennan leaves for Giuliano. Loach pins him in. McLennan chases it into the corner. Chops it up in the air. Giuliano there for Boston College. McLennan sends it back to Cass. Beta chases him. McLennan, wrist shot goes up high. Garrick save. He's probably going wide of the goal, but he wasn't going to take any chances. It's 2-1 for BC with 2.46 to go in the second. Well, if you're a college hockey fan, you're well aware of the University of Vermont story. The university doing the right thing when it found that there was a hazing problem with that team. You can join host Bob Lee and our outstanding Outside the Lines reporting staff as Outside the Lines presented by AT&T brings you the story on hazing in sports, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 Pacific, Tuesday on ESPN. <laughs> Belfay wins the draw, back to Allen. Allen moves middle, wrist shot, whispering, save Gary, how did he see that? Scarborough, a lot of holding and hacking going on away from the puck, but no harm, no foul. Rules referee, Matt Shigos. Lundbaum dumps it in, hands are on the go. Orphic trades a shot with him, hands and comes away. holding his own. Great move by Panzer, setting up Lundbaum for the shot. Boston 
the college crowd wants a call, not going to get it. Here's another three on two for North Dakota. Lundbaum holds up. It's three on three. Panzer trying to move around a little bit. Sends it right out in front, but Hughes is back checking in the slot. It's three on two for BC going the other way with Gianta. And Orphan. The pass is off the mark. These players are tired. I'll tell you, they have been going 100 miles an hour. Speedway over the blue line. Centering pass. Hale can't quite get the tip. Down into the corner. Hale mucks for it. A lot of contact with Orphan. And Norderman trading in the corner. O'Connell at the right point. Throws it down the boards. Orphan loves it to control it. Scoops it up. Giuliano with Gianta. Hopper. Save. Gary. Here's Giuliano. Giuliano working the short side. Gets bumped down. What a hit by Scarpa. To clean out the middle, North Dakota clears to take off the pressure with about 20 to go in the second period. I mean, you said these guys are tired, but they're still not slowing down. The back checking and forward checking is tremendous. Otto ices the puck. 112 to go in the second. The reason I say they're tired is you're starting to see a few of the skills break down a little bit toward the end of the period. These guys are going to be going on pure adrenaline for the entire third, but both teams are thinking we're going to get one in this final 72 seconds of the second. And both goalies, 24. 19 saves respectively Clemenson and Gehring great play across the middle the thing for Gehring that was just so nice there that it opened up he saw the puck the entire way no one in now Clemenson save on the other side you see the pass across the front however he never got a stick on it why Gianta at the end of his shift got back there and got his stick and never let him get a hold of it that was great hustle by Brian Gianta Giuliano cross ice for Farkas. Farkas closing. Shot goes all the way to the upper level on the deflection. He just took a little wrist shot, and there was enough impetus behind that puck to fly 120 feet, 120 feet of distance at about 35 feet high. Up in the souvenir country, that to say. You know, the thing about Jeff Farkas is, and you, you see him make these great moves. He's been knocked off his feet once tonight on a move. And you look at him, and he's wiry. But you know, when he was drafted, he was 167 pounds two years ago. He's bulked up. The thing is, it's not so much as all his skating. It's his upper body strength through that people don't realize he's got. But he has it now, and he's really strong on the skates. Naturally, the rest of it, upper body, he holds himself off people. The drop coming to the left Whoa. of Gary. Second period, Boston College leading North Dakota 2-1 in the national championship game. North Dakota steaming over the line. It's over. He's got Gore. Gore pulls down low for Beta. Beta runs into the motto check. Comes away from it. Beta trying to turn the corner. Motto wrapping him up. Beta along the wall. Leaves it off for Homer. Runs into Gore, but Homer's still got it. Back to O'Connell. He can wind it up. Wrist shot saved. Clemens, and he sticks it out all by himself with Gore on the doorstep. Final 30 seconds of the second period. Boston College just intent to clear it here. Homer to Beta, who had lost his edge. Roach. Otto down behind the play. Bodies just flying all over the ice here in Providence. They need Dolan this break. Has Caulfield with him. Steps over the line right side. Leaves it off. Colano's shot goes just wide. Gehring gets a piece of it with the glove. Colano's intending to pass it back for Scuderi. Final two seconds of the period. Listen to the crowd. ago Boston College won its only national championship the Eagles are 20 minutes away from number two the river last night in Providence and there's going to be fire on the ice in the third period as Boston College is 20 minutes away from its first national championship in more than half a century. The North Dakota Fighting Sioux you just saw are determined to come back and tie this thing and they have designs on winning it in regulation. Alongside Dan Moriarty, I'm Jack Edwards. Glad you could be with us for what is going to be one of the most exciting 20-minute periods of hockey in this entire winter and spring. The national championship of college hockey is at stake. Now, the NCAA allowed us to talk to Coach Dean Blaze of North Dakota in the tunnel between periods. His club is out shooting Boston College and matching BC's effort. He said he would tell his players, keep the faith, but keep it clean if you can. 
Well, I'll stay with it. We had a lot of good chances there in the second period, and I thought uh, you know, the defensemen are taking too many doggone penalties. We've been uh, killing penalties, it seems like, all night long, but uh, we want to get three lines going, and uh, hopefully we can win the third period. And the coach shouldn't say it any better than that. I mean, here's the thing. Belfay, with his speed, is maybe wearing down some of the defensemen, and also Clemenson in net is just, I mean, he just, he's playing out of his mind. But the important thing to keep in mind is that all four penalties last period for North Dakota were by the defensemen. The speed of BC, the Eagles, is paying off right there from behind the net. Hughes stuffs at home. Keep an eye on that in the third period, guys, because you know what? That's what BC is going to try and do for 20 more minutes, and the defensive from North Dakota have got to stay out of the box. Scoring chances to Boston College, despite the fact that the overall shots are in North Dakota's favor, an indication that Clemenson is facing most of his chances from longer range. Boston College, very impressive after two periods, but there is no doubt that these are the two best hockey teams in the nation. He can throw all that stuff right out the window for the next 20 minutes. Roach trying to throw it in front. North Dakota in white attacking left to right in this third and final period of regulation time. Motto, the Hobie Baker Award winner number three in maroon. Losing control of the puck. Here's the wraparounds. Beta trying to stuff it home, but Clemenson true to the task. And, and the same thing this period. They tried it again. Begin with Farkas, begin with Giuliano. And you know what? This time it didn't work out. They didn't get a chance to hit anybody to get a set of tempo. Motto staying with Gorn the entire time. I mean, heavyweight against heavyweight. You got to stay with the guy who's got the hot stick for North Dakota. And then, I mean, he does everything else you have to do also. He's the guy's a complete player. He plays offense, plays defense, brings the puck out of the zone. He's the catalyst on the power play, catalyst on the penalty kill. Killing. Catalyst in the locker room, I can guarantee you, in the locker room, coming out here, he rallied the troops once again, as he's done every single game. Scarp Rude to take the drop against Belfay. Scarp Rude wins it, hands are back to Roach. His drive deflects off of Hughes, who skates into the corner. Lundbaum wheels right on Clemenson and a save, alert. Great play by Lundbaum to get the puck on net from any angle right now, just get it going. Belfay trying to break it out of the zone. Big pressure from South Dakota, from North Dakota here. Excuse me, I just lost a lot of friends in that state. <laughs> Hughes back in the Boston College goal. My name is Bud there now, baby. That's the one mistake you don't want to make. Here comes Scuderi. Scuderi dumping it in right wing corner. Missouri. Turning Gehring. Roach. Hanser takes the check. This is Scarborough working Dolinar. Dolinar. With the stick, pass takes the man, Dolinar takes the puck. Motto starts it back left side, center zone. He dumps. O'Connell around. Spiewak trying to touch it clear. It's a broken stick on the ice. It belongs to a BC player. Dolinar having to get spare lumber at the bench. He's got a new stick. Here's Caulfield over the line. Commodore pounds him down. Spiewak around past O'Connell. It's up to Defaw. He touches it free to the neutral zone. Allen rifles it off the glass. Crazy bounce right back into center ice. Here's Defaw. Steps around Orpix. Check. Ahead intended for Dory. Sticked away at the line. Allen on the poke check. Lephart circles in his own zone. Bobby Allen. Big hit on the near side. Giuliano going down underneath Commodore. Derrick stops it for O'Connell off the side of the fighting Sioux's own net. Farkas was offside, couldn't play the puck. Commodore. Pressure from Giuliano. Commodore pass up ahead for Gorin. Giuliano a little slow getting up after a big hit behind the play. Here's Gorin right down the slot. Gorin save Clemens. He robs the stunt for the second highest score in the nation. BC trying to counter here. They just push it back to center. Beta on it. Farkas. North Dakota going back will work for them in the first period. Get guys. Shot through, scores! It hit a defenseman skate! Gorin gets the ugly one after the beautiful chance was denied. It's 2-2. Clemenson never saw that one coming in. On the breakaway, he had it all to himself. This time, Gorin doesn't give up, comes back, and keeps on throwing it on the net. We saw it early when Lundbaum did from the corner. You knew what Blaze said in the locker room to throw the puck on the net, guys. We've got to create something for ourselves. This time, Gorin has a great one up the middle. Never saw 
a thing. It's actually Beta on the drop pass. Sorry, Beta on the drop pass. Thank you. <laughs> never even hit a skate, never hit a thing, but Clemenson never saw it. Scenario is right there. Omer used him as a screen, kept it on the ice. One of the hardest shots for goalie to save when he can't see it is any shot on the ice. It's, it's very difficult through the five hole. Travis Rooks into the slot. Model sticks it away. 2-2 two -two game. Right back into the slot. Model takes the deflection. Tosses it up ahead. Here comes Gianta, a prolific scorer himself. Cross ice passes behind Hughes. Belfay picks it up on the carom. Right back into the slot, but O'Connell is there to calm things down. Here comes Panzer. He's got Scarp Root on the right. Ladles it into the right wing corner. Model lines up Scarp Root. They jam in the corner. Puck comes back up the wall and all the way to center. Commodore chips it back inside the zone. Delayed offside against North Dakota. Long pass up ahead for Hughes as Motto threads the needle from 100 feet. He gets checked, sends it into the slot. Commodore there. Gianta on the forechecking pressure. Hughes pops it up in the air. Colano dumps it around back to the goal. Boston College slowly getting five fresh legs out there. Commodore chips it up into center. Scuderi back to the zone line. Takes it back, puts it cross ice. Tall field over the line. Horn turns him around. Spiewak for North Dakota. Commodore. Up ahead, pass doesn't connect. Brooks Corbin back into his own zone. Flips it ahead off Colonos' knee. It bounces right to Dolanar. Commodore chops at it. He comes back to the neutral zone. Scuderi off the board. Dolanar trying to work the wall. Commodore pins him in. Dolanar still working with it. Caulfield with his sweater getting tugged. Kicks it around to Dolanar. Down low to Colano, still with the effort. Dubois chops it Orbic, but he gets it down into the corner. It's Dolanar. Dolanar loses as Spiewak picks his pocket. Defaw in center zone, can't track it down. Orpik up ahead. This is Colanos. Colanos with Dolanar. Shot well wide. Bounces up onto the skirt of the net. Again, Colanos take it, but then losing to North Dakota. It's Gorin. Feeding Gorin. Top of the slot. Gorin gets back to his feet. Shot knocked down. Mono clearing out Beta in front. And now BC clears it. Cash just blocking it free on the back end. Boy, the ice is tilted going North Dakota's direction right now. And an incredible play by Mike Mono to stop that pass across from Gorin to Omer. Gorin's goal ties Gianta for the national goal scoring lead. He's got 33. It's 2 2 in the title game in Providence. We're a quarter of the way through the third and final period of regulation time. Boston College and North Dakota are 2 2 at the Frozen Four of the national championship game. That is Carol Gehring. And the man with the beard right behind her is Vern Gehring. The parents of Carl Gehring. The five foot seven inch goalie for North Dakota. Ralph Engelstadt, benefactor to this North Dakota team, a goalie from the 1948 49 season through the 49 50 season for the Fighting Sioux. And the arena in Grand Forks carries his name. Warren drops it off. Travis Roach carrying over the red line, tries to dump it in. Comes off of his stick with Motto. Motto fires it off the glass. Roach controls and dumps it back in in front. Motto. Farkas is a three on two for BC. He's got Giuliano on the left. Pass doesn't connect. Giuliano might take his eye off him for just a second. Lepart tries to spin away from Beta. Beta has it pinned against the glass. Now drops it down. Farkas trying to rake it away from his feet. Beta showing his strength along the wall here, moving it deliberately. Farkas wins it. Now here's a three on two. Make it a two on two as BC hustles to get back. Beta across the middle. Four bodies go flying. And Hughes comes away with it. Cast checking. Pass. Long pass for Farkas. Three on two the other way. Farkas has Julian the middle. Farkas one-handed sweep check. Travis Roach takes it away. They saw the, the straight there of Jeff Farkas. Just couldn't get the, the pass out. Great sweep check. Missouri cross ice pass behind Panzer. BC counters. Here comes Gianta. He has Belfay middle but can't 
withstand the check. Orpik with a big hit at the line. Panzer's long drive. Save Clemson. Panzer hustles in for the rebound. And he gets picked off. Bobby Allen into the corner for Orpik. Orpik lifts it off the glass. Tumbles into the neutral zone. It's Belfay. Here comes Gianta. Gianta teeing it up the back and through the middle. He has Panzer and Spiewak as we go three on three the other way, make it four on three for the Fighting Sioux. Orpik with a huge hit, but Orpik goes down. Lundbaum centers, Gianta gliding back to it. Here comes Hughes. Hughes has Belfay up ahead, two on three. Tries to feed it to him off the leg of Belfay. Gary to O'Connell. O'Connell in front of his own goal. Panzer. Spiewak. Spiewak has Noterman far side, decides to dump it right wing corner. Long bounce. Scuderi chips it out of the zone. It comes back into the North Dakota end. 12-36 to go in regulation time. Here's giveaway. Colano's going right wing corner. Looking in the pile in front where Dolinar is parked at the top of the crease. Scuderi lifts it down into the corner. Big hitting down there. This is Caulfield trying to come out of the pack. Hale takes it away. Colanos wins the puck in traffic. Colanos fighting off a tough Hale stick check. Hale wins it. It's a three on two for the fighting suit. Hale, left side. Norman on the wrist. Can't get the shot off. Caulfield slowly picks it up. His players are starting to look a little tired at the end of a shift. BC needs a change right away. North Dakota gets one. Colanos cross ice. Motto. Backhands it, just dumps it long down the ice. of the icing against Boston College. You know, the 11.48 to go in regulation time. North Dakota has tied it here in the third period. Doug Flutie's Eagles need to answer. BC fans here who are dominant here. But there's a nice, there's some jump right there. Mike Motto, the guy who does everything for the BC Eagles. Which is why we love him because he does face-offs on the power play penalty killing and Orpic. This kid, for a freshman, or for, sorry, for a sophomore, Brooks Orpic, just throws his weight around. 19 hits for Boston College, and we thought it would be flip-flopped. However, what North Dakota is doing is they're being smart in this period with their hits, finishing the hits and getting away, not drawing penalties. Over in the corner, centering pass, scoring on the doorstep, could redirect it on the face of the goal. Boston College gets it out to center, left heart. Picks it up at his own line, fights off the body check. Allen takes it away from Clemson. Lephart with a little bit of space, but O'Connell lining him up. That's enough to make him deviate his path, but Lephart has the bounce come right back to him. O'Connell smacks him down and decks him at the red line. And he goes off the ice. O'Connell's just, once again, the big defensive got to hit and hit clean. Over, over the line, broken up, comes right back to him on the backhand. High and off the backboards. The wraparound. Save Clemenson, he doesn't know where it is. He looked behind him on that. Omar came out from the front. The thing was, the defense had to go to Lee Gorn in the far corner. If Omar had seen him, I'm sure he would have tried to get it over there, but the nice play by BC to hang on and give the shot strictly to Clemenson. That's Mike Motto. No, it's not. It's, uh, it's Brian Gianta across the way, covering up on D. You see the A, you think assistant captain. Gianta comes all the way back, takes the big guy, holds him off. Let's come and see the shot from Homer all the way. On the draw to the left of Clements. Loach tees it up. Locked, then it bounces back to center zone. 11 minutes to go in regulation time. Boston College, twice in the last two years, at the Frozen Four, has lost in overtime. Two years ago in the national championship game to Michigan. Last year to eventual national champion, Maine. Here's a high drive. Spiewak headhunting goes over the top. Puck was up on edge. Down in that zone to our right as we watch it with you. There are a lot of bad bounces. Here's Spiewak. Clements and dives out and puck checks it away. Great alert play by the Boston College goalie. Gianta has to wait at the line. Now it's onside as Belfay comes back. Gianta whips it behind Hughes. Motto lines it up down the boards. Gianta centering pass. Hughes shot. Knocked down. Rebound hits the post and comes out. She goes right on it. The referee signaling no goal quite accurately. Here's a break for Lundbaum the other way. On the back end shot. St. Clemson long rebound. Nobody there. Cash back to Boston College. Both teams changing sloppily on the fly here. Fatigue becoming a big factor. Scarpwood has a chance against Bottle, the Holy Baker winner. 
Scarper is shot. Again, Motto gets his stick on the attempt. Dolinar with the check in the corner. Hale, a big man, a freshman from North Dakota, circling away from Motto, centering. It's a Scarper route all the way through. Again, Clemenson pokes it out there. Hale into the middle. Clemenson again sticking it wide. Back of the goal, Hale looking front all the way through. Commodore's drive. St. Clemenson rebound is between the pads. Two North Dakota players knock each other over in pursuit of the puck. The fighting Sioux are really turning it up. And when you mention that they're getting tired, a little bit tired out there, what happens is you get those odd-numbered rushes. This one, Mato Mato comes in right off, for looking for the rebound, hits off a stick and comes right to him. The goalie, Carl Gehring, never even made the save or on the first in the first place, had to readjust himself, and then the other one. Great play the entire way by Mike Motto getting back and getting a little bit of the stick on, um, on Brian Lundbaum. Just enough. Lundbaum has showed his speed, but once again, Motto end to end action. Is it, is it only me, or do I hear you saying Motto's name every other second? <laughs> it seems that way as Boston College depends on its Hobie Baker Award winner. 9.26 to go regulation time. Scarp route to take the drop for North Dakota. Colonos wins it for BC. Caulfield hammered by Hale, who's had a good couple of shifts here. Colonos, Orpik, Allen. Up the boards, it's behind Golanar. Big pile in front of the penalty bench, and we're going to get a center ice faceoff. They contend so hard for the puck along the wall. Shots by period. Look at the third. Seven to one for North Dakota. And notably, the Fighting Sioux, now 11 minutes into this period, six seconds short of that, no penalties. No, no penalties yet. And what we said earlier, not only the shots, you would think BC is as the offensive power. BC may be getting more shots on net and having less hits. It's flip-flop. North Dakota has less hits, but more shots. Homer, Beta, and Goring out there against Kalanos, Dolinar, and Caulfield. Loses control to Dolanar. Dolanar trying to work the corner. Commodore pins him in after the poke check. Dolanar nudging it. Commodore taking care of business there. Here comes Gorin getting away from Caulfield's foot. North Dakota fans want to call. They're not going to get it. Beta loses it on the sweep check across the line. Dolanar firing it around the board. He comes back to center. Dolanar with Caulfield circling. This is Colano. Down the slot shot. Save game. He hangs on. 8.29 to go, third period. This is the Frozen Four in Providence, Rhode Island. North Dakota has tied it. Kalanos trying to put PC back on top. Welcome to the Suzuki Fest 2000 Deli, honey. Care for Suzuki Motorcycle? Those benches are getting used here as we go deep into the third period. Both North Dakota wearing the white sweaters and Boston College wearing the maroon have been spending every bit of energy on every shift. You see the gold-clad BC fans who have made the drive in just over an hour down here from Chestnut Hill, which is just spinning distance from downtown Boston. And a lot of fans have come all the way from Grand Forks, North Dakota, supporting their fighting Sioux. Jam House in Providence, Rhode Island in the frozen floor. Against Homer, it comes right through the crease. Gorin dumps it out to center zone. Homer working on Scuderi. Scuderi stands him up, delayed offside, but North Dakota gets back onside and turns the puck over to Mato. Mato, excuse me. Lephart getting around the O'Connell hit, getting shot on Gehring. Giuliano back to the point. Mato over to Scuderi, has room. Through the crowd and hits Lepart's leg and goes wide. Marcus dumped behind the play. Homer ladles it out into center zone. The bouncer model controls up ahead to Scuderi. Scuderi fires it around behind Garen. Here comes Lee Gorn, who's had an outstanding third period. Hansen dumps it around. North Dakota changing up lines. Cash. Belfet. Loses to Spiewak, who dumps it back down to the corner. Lundbaum kicks it back to Spiewak. Belfay hits him, then takes the puck. Spiewak chasing from behind. Got to be careful with the stick. Belfay up ahead to Hughes. Hughes winds over the line. The converted defenseman working on Missouri. Centering pass. Nobody home. Schneekloth rushes back. Past Spiewak on the bouncer. But Hughes has the puck between the blue lines. You can see the defense.
defenseman in him as he laterals from side to side. Wants to play it safe. Lee Gorin, who was bypassed for first team All America honors, shown why he might deserve that honor. Here's a guy that last year the Bruins, who have his rights, said, You know what? We want to sign you. And he said, No, no, I want one more shot at the Frozen Four. This is the reason why. Not going to make me an All American? Well, this is my stage tonight, and I'll show you why I should have been a first team All American. And, you know, Lee Gorin hopes this is the last game he ever plays at the Providence Civic Center. This is where Boston's, this is where Boston's minor league affiliate plays, and, you know, if dreams can dream, he might as well go right to the parent club, and after having seen them lose three zip in Philadelphia today, they might be able to use it. Looking at the way he plays, if you can adjust to the NHL game, that's definitely a third line power for him. Right away. Yes. Andrew might progress beyond that. Dolanar in his own zone, trying to get it past Schneekloff. Gets some help. Milano's, they jam. Milano's flies away. This is Milano. They want the puck on his stick as often as they can get it. But he missed the candles here. Dolanar chips it up to the line. Hale forcing it back inside the zone. Milano's cross ice. Orvik. Orvik dumps it up the left side. Zurich back for North Dakota, setting it to center zone. Caulfield takes it away from BC. Off the Zurich, here's a break right down the corner. Just misses on the backhand. Zurich, Scarborough, three on three. Scarborough dumps, North Dakota changes on the fly. 6.15 to go regulation time and a tie game in the national championship at the Frozen Four. Oh, dangerous pass across the slot then. Right through the center zone, but right across two North Dakota players were there and they got away with one. Marcus takes a big shot to the head. Here comes Commodore. It's a four on three for the Fighting Sioux. 80-footer leg save by Clements. Homer chips it around. Feta can't control it for an after it. McConnell's one-timer right through on the deflection. Giolano. time. North Dakota has taken the lead 3-2. Come back for the conclusion of this at the Frozen Four. Two years ago, Boston College in white in the national championship game. Michigan in sudden death overtime won the title 3-2. That was in Boston and it broke the Eagles hearts. Last year in the national semifinals against Maine wearing the white. The Black Bears tip it again past Clemenson in sudden death. Heartbreak again at the Frozen Four. Eagles fans determined that it won't happen a third year in a row. 4.40 to go in regulation time. And they are down by a goal. 
Right now, North Dakota's playing the exact same kind of third period as they played a second period two nights ago against Maine. Hitting solid, finishing your checks, and moving forward. Otto fires cross ice. Too far for Dolan. Our sneak cloth up the hail at the line, bounces off his skate. Scarborough in front of the North Dakota bench. Boston College dumps it back over the line. Sneak cloth takes it. Clears the red line and dumps it in. We can look a lot of that from North Dakota. The safe play as soon as they clear that red line. Here's Scarborough with a little chance. Throws it on Clemenson, but he had the post pin. That one over skates the puck. Hale has played an excellent second half of the third period for North Dakota. Really wreaking havoc in the Boston College zone. Here's a cross ice pass. Colano's picking it up on the go over the blue line. Trying to make the move, but Commodore has it pinned. Colano goes down hard. Scuderi can't keep it in. Lepard has to chase it down in his own zone. 3.43 to go in regulation time. Lepard on a long rush. Lepard on the backhand. Hook checked away. Travis Roach throws it off the glass. Funny bounce. Lepard tees it up. His drive right off of Corey. Diving in front of the shot. Scuderi dumps it to the backboards. Dolinar after it there with Marcus. Check it. It's Giuliano. Marcus around to Cass. To dump it around, it hits the glass and goes up and over. We'll get a face off. 3.15 to go in regulation time. Coming up right after our game, baseball tonight with Carl Ravich and Tim Kirchin, and then Sports Center at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific. It's coming your way on ESPN right after the conclusion of the national championship game at the Frozen Four. The Fighting Sioux are feeling it. Six national championships for that school. Second on the all-time list only to Michigan. And they have their eyes on a seventh. I said after the goal was scored, it looked like BC was kind of shell-shocked, and they sat around for a shift, shift and a half. They have definitely changed momentum. This is important, the face-offs, eight to three. And the best face-off man that BC has is right out there right now, Blake Belfay. Belfay to take the drop against Spiewak. Spiewak wins it. That's nine face-offs, one for North Dakota. Allen, that's just this period. Gianta, back of the goal, loses to Roach. Lundbaum chips it out into the neutral zone. Panzer on the go. Delayed offside coming against North Dakota. They have to clear the zone. Bobby Allen with it. Less than three minutes to go in regulation time. Mike Motto. Belfay overskates the puck. Lundbaum sends it up the boards. Panzer gets pasted by Allen. The puck ends up 200 feet away from where Boston College needs it to be. Here's Hughes alone on the left wing. Hughes with Belfay racing. But again, North Dakota pokes it out of trouble. Back at the line. And now in the BC zone. Two and a half minutes to go in regulation as Hughes wheels. Gets away from Spiewak's hack. O'Connell pops him. O'Connell playing the man. Scarfrew takes the puck. Model wins it away. Check it. It's Belfay. Roach trying to backhand it clear. Noterman on the bouncing puck. Scarfrew. It's a three on one. Here's Noterman going down the left wing. He's got Hale Middle. Pass comes off his skate. Scarfrew back up the left wing and now into center zone. Exactly two minutes to go in regulation time. North Dakota two minutes away from a dramatic come from behind victory in the national championship game. Remember though, Boston College is capable of last minute heroics. Michigan State in the first round of the West Regions. Dolanar fakes the shot, goes around, centers it right through the crease. Made on the long rebound. Otto has to chase it down. Minute and a half to go. To the line. Dolanar throws it in. Clemenson still in his goal. A minute 25 to go. We're going to get an offside against Boston College. The North Dakota bench. The great benefactor of the Fighting Sioux, Ralph Engelstad, who has made millions, has a motto. The harder I work, 
the luckier I get. It never has rung more true for the Fighting Sioux than it has tonight. This is a program which has produced Dennis Hextall, Dave Christian, Craig Ludwig, Phil Sykes, Tony Harkis, Bob Joyce, Ed Belfour, many other superstars, and great college hockey players who are not able to play at that next level. Dean Blaze has a legacy already with the 1997 championship, and this senior class, four of these players, are trying to make it two titles in their four years in Grand Forks. And what they've got to do is go back to that 97 championship. Those four guys obviously have led them this far. They're going to be on the ice a lot. Keep the team focused for a minute 25. On the flip side of things, BC, as always, they got to let it all hang out, and they will. And the top players, the clutch players are out there for them. You have Farkas up front with Belfay. You've got Motto on defense. Allen, Gianta, that's what you've got to go with. Homer dumps the draw back into the Boston College zone. A minute 20 to go. We'll keep our eyes on Clemenson to see if BC empties the net to go six skaters on five. Allen dumps a bouncer in on Gehring. O'Connell whips it around. Bottom. The goalie's off at six on five. Loose in front. Still in the crease. Gehring can't control it. Goal is empty. Left bar knocks it down. Allen keeps it in. We're in the five minute of regulation time. Goes to come with a 3 2 lead on Boston College. Desperation for the Eagles, who have lost twice in the last two years by one in the Frozen Four. O'Connell chops it out the center zone. Leppard beats Gorin to it. Here's Gorin! He ends it! Lee Gorin puts the nail in it! his stage to shine to show people what he wanted to do and he came through two goals one assist and he just controlled the game the man played pretty much every other shift stolen right outside the blue line and let it and just launched it there was no icing on the play he knew that he was right in the center of the ice let it rip baby Carl Gary looking up at the North Dakota fans and doing a dance that every goalie wearing, wearing 40 pounds would be proud of. Vernon Carroll Gehring, two of the happiest people in Providence, Rhode Island. You know, this building only seats 11,000 and change, and the NCAA committee wants Frozen Force to be held in arenas which hold 15,000 and more, which basically means that after this long and storied history of the final of the Frozen Four in Providence, second only to Colorado Springs in hosting the most frozen fours. This could be the last one unless there's a major renewal and renovation of this arena. The Fighting Sioux would hate to see this site go because they have won it in 80, in 82, and now in 2000 in Providence. And for these seniors to bracket a career like this in 97, and then again in 2000 for those four guys, and for Lee Gorin, the fifth senior, who didn't play in that team. The thing is, he did play in that team. However, he had played tier hockey for two years prior, so the NCAA would not allow him. This was his only shot. He practiced that entire year with the team, all the workouts, went through everything, and said, I, I, want, I want one chance. For Jerry York and the Boston College Eagles, how many different ways can you have your heart broken? You have to be so good to get to the Frozen Four. You have to be great to have the consistency that brings a team here three years in a row. But on this night, Lee Gorin has taken it away. Belfay. O'Connell on the backhand absorbs the 
check. BC continuing to play without a goalie in the final 30 seconds. Puck is underneath O'Connell, and the faceoff will come to Gehring's right. Listen to the Fighting Sioux fans across the way from us. school only about 10,000 students and hockey is the only show in town in fact hockey is the only show in the state you know the entire state of North Dakota right now it's on its feet Boach setting it around the boards beta just hacks it clear and motto the Hobie Baker award winner gladly trade the trophy for the title it's not going to happen 15 seconds to go North Dakota has won six national championships before this one. And now, the Fighting Sioux and their story program count it down. Champs, a seventh time. for 2000 with two goals and an assist in the third period Lee Gorin to finish as the national scoring leader and the fighting Sioux and Boston College Eagles exchange congratulations in the tradition that began in hockey and has spread to so many other sports one more note on Lee Gorin we said at the top of the telecast, he also led the nation in game-winning goals. He added to that total also. It was 1-1 coming out of the first. Boston College led 2-1 coming out of the second. Coach Dean Blaze said to his fighting Sioux between the second and third periods, keep doing what you're doing, but keep it clean. Don't take penalties. And in the third period, North Zero. Dakota did not take a single penalty. The four defensemen had penalties in the second period. They all came out, finished their checks, forwards, went to the net, shot the puck on the net whenever possible. Goran's goal that was a winning goal was not the best opportunity as he had 30 seconds earlier on the breakaway. He just came in, used the screen, put the puck back on net. You can't score unless it's there. It seemed through two periods that the work rate on both sides was about even. In the third period, no question that North Dakota was able to find more in its reserves than Boston College was. And even though it seemed that BC had a slight edge in talent in the first two periods, no question that the big guns for North Dakota fired all of their rounds in the third. It seems that they adjusted to what BC was doing in the third period as they adjusted to the semifinals, what Maine was doing, and, and hit them. Listen to this joy. Boston College is number two for the second time in three years. It's Ralph Engelstadt's motto, the harder I work, the luckier I get. It wasn't luck tonight. North Dakota scores three unanswered goals in the third period, coming from behind to defeat Boston College 4-2 for the national championship at the Frozen Four. Stay with us on ESPN for baseball tonight. Coming up next, followed by SportsCenter.
Carl Ravitch and Tim Corton standing by for baseball tonight. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. For Dan Moriarty, I'm Jack Edwards. It's been a pleasure to bring you the Frozen Four. Good night from Providence. North Dakota is the champion.